Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we have an incredible quote channeling that covers so many amazing topics. Everywhere from service to second density, viral contagions on a societal level, inspirations from Advaita Vedanta, supporting universal healing, the paradox of chicken and eggs, death and war, mind-altering plant medicines, and the value and use of the dream state connecting to the soul's purpose. So many amazing topics are covered. Quo is a group of higher density beings channeled by LL Research. LL Research has done an amazing job at shepherding this material with absolute integrity. And it is an honor to read these words with approval from LL Research. Each of these lectures grow in their application as I read them. Sometimes the very words I'm reading seem to carry light codes and information beyond just the meanings of the words. I find that a lot of this material has evolved my understandings of consciousness and my place in the universe. Quo is a group of different density beings, including Hatan, Latwi, and Ra, who were the original entities that were channeled for the Ra material. This one, in particular, was delivered on February 11th, 2023. We begin with Jim Channeling. I am Quo, and am with this instrument at this time. We greet each of you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator, of which we are all a part. We thank you for calling us to you today to speak to those concerns that are upon your minds and within your hearts. It is our great joy and privilege to join you in this endeavor. For this is the means by which we ourselves proceed along our own path of service to others. Together, we walk this path, helping each along the way. We would ask you to consider our words and concepts using your own inner discrimination to determine if they are meaningful to you. If there are any which do not ring of truth to you, we ask you to set them aside so that we may not provide any stumbling blocks for you on your own spiritual path. If you would grant us this favor, then we are free to speak our thoughts. At this time, we would ask if there might be a query with which we begin. Question. How can we be of greatest service to second density life forms in helping them evolve towards self-consciousness? I am quote and I'm aware of your query, my brother. This is a very central query for describing a portion of the evolution of the consciousness of the one infinite creator that is in all densities of experience and all moments of experience of each person, each animal, each kind of consciousness that you may be aware of. For as the movement of consciousness comes into being within the first density, there is the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. And these are the beginning of consciousness, as the fire and the wind teach earth and water to be formed in such and such a manner, that there is the possibility of life, as you know it, becoming born into that first density experience. In the first density, there is the simple awareness of being. This is the expression of consciousness at that time. At a certain point in what you call time, there is the evolution of the earth that has been able to provide life upon it into what you call the plants and the animals that are many and various and yet which contain this consciousness of the one creator that moves inexorably towards the light that has created them, the light of the one infinite creator. After a great period of what you would call time, billions of years, these types of plants and animals begin to evolve in a manner which has the possibility of becoming more conscious, becoming self-conscious, so that the simple awareness that is the quality of the first density becomes self-awareness or self-consciousness in the second density. There are many of these types of plants and animals that the human beings in the third density have contact with on a regular basis so that there is a relationship set up between the plants and animals, 
the second density creatures and the third density beings that have the mind, the body, and the spirit activated and can relate in a manner of what you would call investiture with the second density plants and animals, most especially those that you call pets and those that you call trees, but all types of second density creatures may be invested with greater awareness. However, upon your planet there are more types of investiture of the plants and the animals, the trees and the pets. There is a relationship that can be developed between the third density being and the second density pets that has within it a kind of devotion, a type of love, as you would call it, that comes from one's heart, a heart that opens itself in unconditional love to the pet, to the tree, to the plant, and in some cases to a place that has been inhabited for a great period of time with the same loving devotion. This devotion of love begins to activate within each plant, pet, or place the return of that love. The loving devotion is like the seed that is planted in the spiritual sense into the plant, the animal and the place. It is watered by continuing to love and create a relationship of a loving nature that sees each as the creator in a sense in which there is an investment of the creator's love moving through your third density heart that is activated in unconditional love and begins and continues this relationship of devotion of love for a period of what you call time. This period of time is not set in a certain manner. It is described and functions according to the quality of love that is shared back and forth between the third density being that you are and the second density being that you are investing with your love. And then that second density being returns that love to you. This creates a bond between the two of you, which is an enabling type of bond, an energy of growth, an energy of expansion, an energy of exploration, so that the pets or the place or the plant has the opportunity of evolving in its own consciousness in a manner which propels it into the third density experience as it is able to continue on its own spiritual journey in the relationship that you have established with it. This is the process which is always and ever the same that is based on the love and the light of the one infinite creator being activated to a higher and higher level by the investiture from the third density being to the second density being. You yourselves become able to take over this process of spiritual evolution as you continue to exercise the open heart of unconditional love so that you see yourself connected with each other self within your experience by this bond of love. The power of love is immense. It has the ability to advance consciousness continually throughout the octave of experience. That you now are traveling your path and seeking and serving the one infinite creator at all times as you share your love with others. Thus, this love is the great power of transformation, of the increase in consciousness, of the ability to move more and more in unity with the one infinite creator. At this time we shall transfer this contact to the one known as Austin. We are those of Quo. Austin Channeling. I am Quo and we greet this circle through this instrument at this time. We would offer a comment of appreciation through this instrument for this circle and the atmosphere in which we have come to find this circle. For we respond to the calling generated by each seeker here and as you have gathered for this meeting we have found that there is a light-hearted and jovial atmosphere that is very conducive to our entering with you in this seeking that allows us to more easily join you. This is an important aspect of your journey as seekers at this time, for the seriousness that seems to be about you in your world can be much more palatable and easily perceived so long as the seeker maintains a lightness of heart and remembers the humor and the joy of the Creator in all circumstances. At this time, we ask if there is a query to which we may respond. Question. Can you explain the nature of how viral outbreaks can affect entire populations, like the pandemic we just moved through versus viruses that only affect an individual at a time? I understand the body's placement of sickness is due to an imbalance of chakras, but it is a virus that affects a whole population due to a social imbalance. We are quo, and are aware of the query, my brother. And we appreciate the carefulness communicated within this question. In order to respond fully, we feel that we must offer a preliminary note 
in that when speaking about illness and difficult circumstances and a sense of imbalance and even karmic movements, we find that within your culture there is often a lens or a bias, sometimes unconscious of viewing this process as a punishment or retribution placed upon an entity or a population because of some failure to adapt or develop or respond in a certain way to a certain circumstance. This bias can increase the distortion in any attempt to understand or to heal such illnesses and imbalances. And so we ask that any considering a query of this nature attempt to release the perception of illness as a result of failure and perhaps even punishment for the actions and imbalances of an entity or even a population. Within this bias released, we can consider the nature of illness in the terms as you have described and to explore the dynamics of the metaphysical kind, in how illnesses such as what you described as the pandemic may spread across populations. We may start by highlighting the consciousness that you contain within the third density and its veiled nature. You as an entity veiled within third density perceive yourself as an individual having an individual consciousness that interacts with other individual consciousnesses. This includes other third density beings, but also second density beings of both the perceivable kind, as we have discussed earlier in this circle, but also imperceivable such as the viruses or even bacteria that would be discussed within your query. And even further, there is a consciousness within the first density of your planet that you perceive as other than your own. However, as we are aware that you are aware, this distinction is illusory. The consciousness that you contain as an individual at the most basic and fundamental level is the consciousness of the Creator, which is the same consciousness contained within the virus and contained within the bacteria, even contained within the more minuscule and microscopic elements such as proteins and elements that make up the DNA of these beings. All is the consciousness of the Creator. This awareness may be made available to you in some fashion through a regular practice of meditation, where the consciousness of the Creator may seep up through the roots of mind into your third density conscious mind. As your third density conscious mind reaches down deep into the roots, and these two meet in order for you to perceive with greater clarity the union between you and your other selves of any nature. This is an important element of exploring the question that you have posed, for there are, what we may say, levels or nested spheres of consciousness as you move down into these roots of the mind. These nests of consciousness include groups in greater and greater concentric circles or spheres. You may view such as a mind of a population of a certain geographic area or the mind of your entire planetary sphere. The distinction between these different groups can be varied depending on the circumstances of the group and the interconnectedness of that group with other groups. And so we find upon your planet, particularly in recent years, that there is a greater and greater merging of the group consciousness upon your planet of peoples. This is a key element in understanding how such an outbreak can occur, as you have described among a greater population than just one individual. For though you perceive yourself as an individual with your own biases and imbalances that you may take responsibility for, there is a deeper aspect of yourself that is connected in a truly integral way to the greater mind, and this greater mind may have its own biases and imbalances. That though you may not perceive yourself as containing those things, they exist within your unconscious mind, and you on some level of your being have accepted some responsibility for adopting this group mind, and utilizing it, and even attempting to offer your own healing to this group mind. When attempting to examine the difference between how an entity such as a virus or a bacteria may interact with an individual due to their own imbalances, we do find that there is a very similar dynamic when such a virus or bacteria interacts with larger populations. And there may be symbolic aspects to how these second density entities are offering their service to the individual or to the population. This dynamic can be explored through what this instrument is familiar with as the morphic field. For both as an individual and as a group, your consciousness generates a field about you that can influence the very material of your environment. 
This field particularly can influence those biological aspects of the second density and the third density. As you are generating this field, your imbalances, your biases, those aspects of self that have not yet been realized by the self have not yet been healed by the self and brought into the light of the one infinite creator, present themselves within this field and offer an opportunity to the second density entities, such as the virus or the bacteria, to be drawn to and even changed by that field. There is an interface between these entities and the individual that manifests as a message or an alarm to the individual that these things exist within the individual's field, and they are being asked to be seen with the love of the Creator and to be balanced and healed within the consciousness of the individual. This dynamic is very similar when it plays out among entire populations, for as a population, whether contained within a specific area upon your planet, or even as the interconnected population that you have become upon your planet, there is a field generated by the entire population that can be seen as a distinct, unique entity in its own. The field interacts with the fields of other consciousness, such as those of the second density entities, as you have described, so that these entities may present themselves and a what may be crudely called contagious way and may spread more easily and readily among the population because the interaction is between the larger group consciousness and this second density group consciousness in order to bring awareness to something within that population's own unconscious mind. And in this dynamic, the group consciousness of the second density entities is similarly influenced by this morphic field generated by the larger population and adapts in certain ways in order to drive home the message, so to speak, of what is attempting to be brought to consciousness. As we examine the nature of how your planet relates to this particular circumstance, what has been made so poignant by your recent experiences upon your planet, we find that there is much confusion contained within this relationship between the third density being and those second density other selves that offer their service in a way that appears to be quite destructive and harmful and cause much suffering. We do not intend to make light of the difficulty of such circumstances and the pain caused by the catalyst generated by this relationship. However, we do find that there is a great element missing which is central within your culture and society of this relationship and that is the one of the Creator's love and light and care and understanding for the natural world from which these second density entities are born from and represent. It is undesirable in our perspective that the material aspect of the circumstances and the medicine based upon the mechanical aspects of the dynamic, which has been called allopathic medicine, is prominent because of this very prominent consciousness within your population of viewing the universe as a mechanistic and in some sense lifeless. From this perspective, it makes sense that an entity such as a virus or a bacteria seems to be attacking and the proper response then is the defense from a mechanical perspective. We do not encourage the dismissal of the mechanical aspects of the circumstances and would encourage each seeker to remember that allopathic healers and the material approach to attempting to heal individuals and populations are indeed attempts to heal and in many cases we find generate love and come from an open heart and a desire to bring balance and health to you and to your other selves. But we also find that for as long as the approach of medicine and healing are attempting to understand the dynamics of such things as disease and contagiousness, do not take into account the underlying consciousness that you share as an individual and as a population with that underlying consciousness of the second density entities that are forming this relationship with you. Then there will be a continued cycle of catalyst, attempting to bring your awareness as a population to the missing aspect of understanding the love and the light contained within these beings and within the relationship between these beings and yourself. For it is not an attack that is being levied against you as a world for a population, but it is instead more akin to a discussion or a dance between 
two aspects of the Creator attempting to come into greater understanding and unity with each other. And if the dynamics of disease are explored through this lens, we find that there would be a great innovation of medicine and technology upon your planet that helps to answer the question of why these things unfold on such a massive scale and what imbalances are attempting to be balanced and addressed by such outbreaks. It is important as seekers within the third density that whatever question is asked, it is remembered that underlying any dynamic, any circumstance, or any trouble that you are wishing to understand, that the consciousness and the love and the light of the one infinite creator is the ultimate source of all involved, and that attempting to make the connection between these seemingly separate aspects of self and other through that underlying consciousness may reveal much that is desired and sought. Question. For Advaita Vedanta, I was wondering how did the rishis of that time in the culture so long ago come across that information? Was that something that was shared with them? Or was it a product of their meditative practice? And how does that understanding inform your journey into fourth density and possibly even higher? I am quo and am aware of the query. My sister, in working with this instrument, we find that we must speak in generalities for there is a tenuous familiarity with the subject within this instrument's mind, but that does not prevent us from answering the generals of your query. In particular, the question of the source of this inspiration and information, whether it is from other beings or through the meditative practices, we would highlight that again, the source of all such inspiration is the Creator. And yet in the specifics of your query, it is indeed the dedication and the intensity of the seeking of those individuals who have developed upon these lines that has generated the practices and the information and inspiration to which you refer. There was very little external interaction in a direct and literal sense, and much was discovered within the self of these individuals that was then brought forth and was given to others so that these practices became central and purified as ways of understanding the self and the journey of the self within this particular culture and circumstance at that time. In terms of the role of this particular practice and set of inspirational concepts, we can only say that the cultural backdrop in which they are explored in your current circumstances is quite different, and while they play a central role in attempting to come to an understanding of the self and the evolution of the higher self to higher densities, they must be adapted and understood in new contexts in order to bring about such evolution and transformation in your current environment. However, we find that the potential and the potency is not reduced by this, so long as it is understood that the context in which these practices take place are integrated and adapted to. Is there a further query, my sister? Oh no, that answers my question. Thank you so much, Quo. I am Quo. We thank you, my sister. Is there another query to which we may respond? Question. How can we elevate our consciousness in unity to support universal healing? I am Quo, and am aware of the query, my sister. We find within this query a grand and inspiring concept referred to as universal healing, and we admire the attempt to elevate oneself to such a grand and inspiring level of consciousness. It is a level in which we ourselves desire and attempt to reach within our own journey and are glad to join you in this attempt. The nature of this seeking of elevating the self and one's consciousness to this grand level of universal healing is one that is very similar to the general journey of the seeker, one in which the seeker lives a full life of catalysts and joy and sorrow and attempts to bring the circumstances into the self and allow them to be integrated through the love and light of the one infinite creator. This takes a dedicated practice of meditation and regular introspection upon the circumstances that one finds oneself in. The basis for this is a daily practice in which any circumstance that stands out to you as a seeker, whether it be positive or negative, is recalled within the conscious mind and attempted to be viewed from a state of love and light and acceptance and non-judgment and allowed to move you as a seeker onto the deepest levels. This regular practice 
is a prerequisite for the greater work that we would refer to as adepthood that reaches for the high and mighty goal of universal healing. And as one has established this central practice, more practices may be adopted into one's life that require a strong tendency to meditation and ability to utilize the silence of mind in order to reach such heights. We cannot be specific about what practices may be adopted, only that there are many schools of spiritual thought and magical thought within your worlds and within your cultures, some more well-known and some lesser known that require regular ritualistic practice of a magical nature. And it is this magical practice that so long as one has adopted an individual practice of regular meditation and balancing, one may tap into the energy generated by a magical ritual practice to, shall we say, boost oneself to these grand levels of healing that touch upon the deepest level of the self and the highest level of the universe and connect the intelligent infinity within yourself within the intelligent infinity within all other beings and things. This is a general practice or description of practice of how one may view the path of reaching a consciousness of universal healing. Is there a follow-up to this query, my sister? No, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I am Quo, and we thank you, my sister. At this time, we would take leave of this instrument and transfer the contact to the one known as Jim. We are Quo. Jim Channeling. I am Quo, and am once again with this instrument. We would ask if there is another query to which we may respond. I guess I have a query. I have a somewhat playful question that has also been a deep debate of the philosophical community. In our culture, we have this debate about a seeming paradox. It goes like this. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The paradox being that if the chicken came first, how would it have been alive in the first place without an egg? But if the egg came first, how would a chicken have been alive to lay the egg? I am quo, and am aware of your query, my brother. Indeed, you have a paradox here, for there is that which creates and that which is created. And it would seem that there would have to be one or the other or both in order for there to be both. However, we look at these items, these creatures you call the chicken and the egg as being portions of the one infinite creator that exist in a timeless state in the realms of the mind that consider the possibility of paradox and the resolution of paradox. The beings of the chicken and the egg are concepts that are arrived at by the creator having made all there is in an instant. The entire creation was formed in one great original thought, so that the creation of the planets, the stars, the galaxies, the universe, have instantaneous beingness. Each of these qualities, then each of these creations are intelligent, and they live and move and have their being within the unlimited nature of the Creator upon each level of beingness. For example, Your planet itself was created in a manner in which there was at some time, as we had spoken before, the beginnings of life, the beginnings of the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. They were able to create life forms. These life forms had a beginning. They had a procession of their beingness so that there was their fertility that continued to sprout new life forms. And they all came in an instant at that time. And as you know, time This progression of beingness moved forward, as you would say, so that there was an expansion or a greater nature of the being of various kinds of creatures, all with a beginning and the seeming end, and yet all continued forward in the evolution of that type of creature, of that type of plant, so that there would be what you see as chickens and eggs, a plenty spread about the creation of the father, moving into a kind of evolution of their own consciousness, so that there was at all times the chicken and the egg, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Is there a further query, my brother? Not at this moment, thank you. We thank you, my brother. Is there another query at this time? I have a query. In considering the current and all the past wars that have existed on this planet, and I'm thinking now the battle in Ukraine or the war in Ukraine when when people are killed in violence. That is extremely terrorizing, generating fear, anger, hatred, Is it possible that the dying soul or personality becomes stuck on this planet? Or is there a normal progression in a life on a different plane after the three-dimensional life? I am Quo. 
and am aware of your query, my brother. We find that there is no one definitive answer for this query. For many who are participants in the warring nature of bellicosity that has been so prevalent upon your planet, enter into such endeavors, some are more or less willing and able to participate in the battle. Those who participate through a willingness to enter battle know that there is the chance that they shall be killed, as you would say, that the body shall be dropped, and the spirit shall find itself in another reality, a reality that is much different than the one which was left behind. At that time, the one who is now exploring the world of the spirit has as its guidance system those who will come to it and help it to reorient its awareness of what state of being it now expresses so that there is the opportunity to look upon the life pattern in the manner which may be seen as a healing experience as the incarnation is reviewed and the means of leaving the incarnation is examined. At this time, there is a conscious awareness of how this all proceeds as memories of previous incarnations and their endings are recorded so that there is the ability to have what you would call the grand overview of how this process works. And then this entity may move into another realm of existence, into what is called the quality performed or provided by the form maker body, that of the indigo ray, so that it may wait for the future incarnation that will be coming upon a certain point in its time. This is a normal and natural type of experience of what you call the death of the body within the third density experience. However, many entities who partake in the warring situation are not what you would call willing participants and have every hope of surviving without the necessity of dropping the body and moving forward, for this is not something that is considered desirable, that is something that is to be feared. And when it occurs, the entity experiencing this type of death is often in a state of what you would call shock or an inability to perceive what has happened. It will look about itself seeing that it is still in the realm of the field of battle, that it has no longer the clothing of the body about it, that it is a what you would call a soul or a spirit, and that it is confused, that it has no ability to move forward for it does not want to go forward. It wants to go back to where it was, to be alive again within its life, to live in a normal way from which it was taken in order to have to participate in the warring actions. In this instance, there is what is frequently called the lingering spirit which wanders about aimlessly, trying to make sense of its position and what is the next step to take. It also has many friends about it that at some point will be able to make contact with it as guides, as the higher self, and so forth. However, the ability to make contact with this entity is prefaced or necessitates the entity's own understanding of what it is now experiencing, or what you would call the penetration of etheria, the penetration of a nature of where it is, how it got there, and what the next step might be. This could take a different amount of time for each entity of this nature, for each is unique. The time period eventually will come so that there may be contact made with this entity and it may go through the same process of the healing and review of incarnation that the entity who is willing to fight and willing to die as a part of his duty has experienced as a natural form of its life passing is there a follow-up query to this question my brother yes is there anything that loved ones family members or just those of us who think of those who have died on battlefields can do prayer positive offerings of love to comfort those lingering souls I am quo, and I'm aware of your query, my brother. Yes, there is the possibility of making contact with such a soul through what you would call prayer and visualization, so that you send what you feel is your own highest level of unconditional love, healing to such an entity, surrounding the entity with this love and healing vibration, so that it has at its disposal or utilization the recognition and feeling of that love so that within its own heart the love that flows through all entities from the one infinite creator is available to it to be energized in a manner which begins to move into the mind, the intellect, that perceives that there is love there and that that love has a healing effect and that there is the possibility then that this love may be used as a fuel for moving forward in the incarnative process, becoming thus able to realize the status of the self, the nature of its being, and the direction of the path it now will take as a normal part 
of its understanding of passing for this illusion and from the body, from the higher realms, or the inner planes of your planet birth. Is there a further query, my brother? No, thank you. I'm deeply grateful. Question. What is the role of mind-altering consciousness, altering plant medicines like magic mushrooms, ayahuasca, marijuana? Are they helpful on the path to ascension or not so much? I am quo and am aware of your query, my sister. Again, we must say that for each entity, there is the necessity for setting the intention. If the intention is for the purpose of advancing one's own spiritual journey, of realizing the areas within the being that may be in need of healing, of the chakras that may be blocked by one concern or another that has not been dealt with in the conscious state of a normal daily round of activities, then the use of the plant medicines can be quite helpful, for they are what you would call an acceleration of this setting of intention to do that which has not been done. They magnify the opportunity to heal the self and to move forward on the evolutionary path as full members of the human race, all of whom have various difficulties that make them seem to be in need of healing and of being imperfect, yet this need for healing in seeming imperfection is exactly the state of being that is required to be understood so that the plant medicines may have their effect to fulfill their desire in recognition of the need for healing. Is there a further query, my sister? No, thank you. Question, yes, but how do you determine where along your path that the efficacy of these different drugs or whatever start to fall away and they become a hindrance at some point? I'm not sure how to tell that. I am quote, and I'm aware of your query, my brother. Again, this is the providence of the one who is seeking some kind of healing or reorientation of the mind-body-spirit complex, so that is more effective in opening the heart in unconditional love, which is the purpose of your third density illusion. This is a determination that is something that is the responsibility of the one in the situation of considering the use of such plant medicines or considering not using such plant medicines. This is not something that anyone else can tell you, my brother. This is something that you must determine on your own. These free will choices are the way that every person, every entity moves forward in an evolutionary process. One cannot choose for you to have to move. This is your choice. Is there a further query, my brother? No, that's fine. Thank you. I'm Quo, and we thank you, my brother. At this time, we will transfer contact to the one known as Austin. We are those of Quo. I'm Quo, and I'm once again with this instrument. Is there another query from the circle to which we may speak? I have a query. What is the role of our experiences in the dream state as a catalyst for spiritual growth? And when going through a particularly strong experience, is there a need for the same sort of balancing as in the day-to-day -day life experiences? I am quo, and I'm aware of your query, my brother. We appreciate this query for the so-called dream state is a central function of your beingness in the third density and plays an important role for the spiritual seeker, for the dreaming may act as a bridge for communication between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. There are few other regularly available tools or states that present themselves to seekers in which this communication may be so direct and graphs with some cohesion by the conscious mind. And so we would emphasize that this query is quite central for any seeker wishing to develop this relationship between the conscious and unconscious mind. And this relationship is indeed a vastly important aspect of each seeker's journey. To respond to the specific query, we may say that the role of the dreaming may take different shapes and different forms depending on the circumstances of the seeker. If an individual is not oriented towards seeking and instead is content to live a life of relative indifference, perhaps experimenting with the polarities of service to self and service to others, then the dreaming takes on a role of simple balancing of energies that the individual experiences throughout their journey in the waking realm. And when the individual enters the dream state, the unconscious mind is simply allowing certain energies to play out and to reduce their momentum within the individual so that they do not take over and create unstoppable patterns of energy within the individual. This is an important yet simple function that does not need conscious effort for its effectiveness. However, once an individual begins upon the path of spiritual seeking, particularly the path of service to others, in which the relationship of self with Self is one of acceptance and gentleness, 
and understanding and an attempt to integrate the wholeness of the self, then the relationship between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind becomes exponentially more important, for there are many riches of the Creator contained within the unconscious mind that are not readily available to the veiled conscious mind. And so a seeker who intends to develop this relationship and come to an understanding of these unseen aspects of self buried deep within the intention to establish and fortify this bridge of communication is incredibly important and effective. Simply holding the intention to use this relationship and state of dreaming itself will change the nature of the dreaming and begin to develop a certain language or certain unique imprint that the unconscious mind presents to the conscious mind in the dream state. This is an initial stage in which the seeker who diligently utilizes this communication may begin to find certain patterns, certain symbolism, and certain individual archetypes playing out regularly. These aspects of the dream may hint to the seeker a great many aspects of their journey, whether it be biases or wounds needing to be healed within the self or potential waves of service, or even help the conscious mind to perceive things far beyond what would regularly be within the realm of the conscious mind, such as insight into relationships or interpersonal dynamics that may be useful for the seeker in order to be of service to others. As the seeker continues to study and develop a slow relationship between the conscious and unconscious mind in the study of dreaming, then the experiences of the dreaming may take an even more coherent shape and begin to give messages and communication to the seeker from deeper aspects of the unconscious mind, not just communicating those things of the self, but of the cultural mind and the planetary mind and even the cosmic mind. These sometimes may take the form of very pleasant or positive seeming dreams, but can sometimes also take the form of intense catalyst through the dream state. And in response to the query of whether such intense dreaming experiences necessitate balancing, we would say that in general sense there is an intention that the intensity of this experience be carried forth into the waking state so that the waking state may grapple with what was experienced in the dream state. The fact that an experience within the dream has made such an imprint is itself an aspect of this communication and a message to the conscious self that there is something to pay attention to and a potential for healing or for balance if the conscious self sets the intention to understand and attempt to integrate the experience that has made such an imprint on the self. This is long and careful work and we encourage any who worked with dreams to have patience with the self and with the unconscious mind for this is a relationship that is for the positive seeker properly developed with gentleness and a slow understanding that must be developed through repeated exercise of acceptance and understanding is there a follow-up to this query my brother no thank you for your response i have a follow-up to that question are there some exercises that you could give us to help train the conscious mind to remember dreams I am quo and am aware of the query, my brother. We find that this is quite a practical question with quite practical answers and that no single method is effective for all individuals. But we may highlight that the most important aspect of this dynamic is to set the intention regularly and consciously. And in the light of this, we would suggest that before entering a state of sleep, the seeker, through affirmation, whether spoken aloud or internally, declare to the self, and to the unconscious mind the sincere desire to come into a relationship and to develop this relationship through remembering that which occurred in the dream. This may not seem an effective method initially, but if it is repeated over a period of time, the charge generated by this continuously stated intention grows to the point where the magical potential is then tapped by both the conscious and unconscious mind. This may be one of the most effective methods if it is practiced with patience and faith that it is not done fruitlessly if results do not appear immediately. Another suggestion we may have for seekers wishing to remember that which occurs within their dream state is to bring those memories into the waking state in a solid way as quickly as possible upon waking. This may interrupt your typical cycles of sleep, for if a seeker awakes in the middle of the evening or of the night with a faint impression of a dream upon their minds, it would require the seeker to bring the self fully into a waking state to record this impression. Yet we find that doing so 
helps to, shall we say, pave the pathway of remembrance in the waking state. And as this method is repeated, then more and more, the seeker may consciously recall those things occurring in the dream state, without needing to record them with such immediacy upon waking. Any method that the seeker can adopt in order to do this in an easy way that does not disrupt the sleep cycle too much is encouraged, but it is an important aspect of beginning this relationship that not only helps to develop the brain and mind in this way, but solidifies the intention of the self and expresses the dedication of the self that this is a work that one truly wishes to partake in and this reinforcement then builds in its effectiveness with each iteration. We find that this instrument's energy is growing low, and so we will at this time transfer the contact back to the one known as Jim. We are, quote, I am, quote, and am with this instrument. We would ask at this time if there is a final query to which we may respond. Question. How can third density beings further strengthen our mind-body connection to our soul's purpose for the good of all? Thank you. I am, quote, and I'm aware of your query, my sister. The ability to make a contact with your sole purpose and strengthen that purpose is something that needs to be done in the setting of the attention in your meditation or in your sleep and dream state to become aware of the nature of your sole purpose, your pre-incarnated choices, the means by which you wish to accelerate your own spiritual growth. As in the previous query, dealing with dreams, it is necessary to make this intention a strongly felt desire that your subconscious mind can perceive, that your soul stream may be aware of, and through your subconscious mind communicate to you some facets that would describe to you how you wish to proceed on your spiritual journey within the third density illusion. This type of perception may become known to you in symbolic form or in words or in thoughts or in images that are meaningful to you, that you will recognize as being a part of you, a part of the soul stream, which you have moved so many times before into incarnation. This is a relationship which is precious, personal, and powerful. It is that which will respond to you when you are able to give it your heart's desire through your meditation, your contemplation, your visualization, and your interpretation of dreams. Each entity on the spiritual path has the choices that are most powerful within the life path of the seeker of truth. For they are choices that you have made previous to the incarnation after determining what lessons you have learned in past lives and what lessons remain in order for you to be able to open your heart in unconditional love to all entities about you. For this is the great lesson of the third density illusion. And when it is accomplished, it makes the seeker available for the harvest and to the fourth density of love and understanding. This is a journey that all share within the third density, and we are sure that your desire to know will draw unto you the answers you need. At this time, we shall take our leave of this group and this instrument, thanking all present for their loving support that provided the framework for this channeling session to occur. Each here has a heart that is open in love, flowing through the love and lights of the one infinite creator, and together we have traveled much further tonight and today on this spiritual journey. We are those who quo, and we thank you again for your diligence. We leave you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator, Adonai Vasu Oragas. And that concludes this particular channeling. It's been a couple weeks since I read a quo channeling, and I really, really enjoyed this one. This had a diversity of topics that were answered and I learned so much in this particular one on so many different things. There is a powerful relationship that we have with second density beings that is a part of this experience. I have a very close connection with my cats and I feel like they are awakening into a third density consciousness. My cats understand me. They are intelligent. I promise you they have a soul. And I think about this often. I'm glad they asked that question about our relationship with second density and how it affects our own spiritual journey. I found a lot from those answers. There's a very meaty question they asked about viral outbreaks. And it is interesting to contemplate the pandemic as an outlier of group consciousness. We're entering into a higher level of group consciousness. And thus this worldwide pandemic came about. And 
could it be a result of our group consciousness also forming at the same time? It could be some sort of effect from that. I truly enjoyed their answer to whether or not the chicken came first or the egg. Because everything happened in an instant. And I love that. Tell me what your favorite part of this particular channeling was. You can find all the rest of the channelings in the Quo playlist, but make sure that you check out LL Research. You can search through all these channelings and find some really amazing topics that you may have particular questions about that they have answered. They've answered a lot of different questions over the years. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Check out my art at www.newearth.art and welcome to The Reality Revolution.